We are flying from Belgrade en route to Titovlad. Now we are over Montenegro, about 70 kilometers inland from the Adriatic. Below us, the peaks of Durmitor, Vojnik, and Sinjajevina. In one of those valleys is a town which every year appears in the news. A town which so far this winter has been snowbound and cut off for three months. A town which one day is to disappear from this remote mountain region to the bottom of the lake, which will be formed by the construction of a hydroelectric station. A town whose very name begins with the last letter of the alphabet. Soon we will land in Titograd, from there we will head for Nukšić and then on to snowbound Shamnik. Warm breezes reach inland to Titograd. There it is, right below us. Further to the north, the Mediterranean climate cut off by the mountains no longer exerts any influence. is 12 degrees above zero centigrade and on the snow-covered mountains we just flew over about 20 below. Industrial center of this area, located about 50 kilometers north of Titograd, right on the threshold of the snowbound areas. We have been told that a few workers from the steel mill left several weeks ago to visit their families and villages up in the region where we are heading, but they still haven't returned. Heavy snow fell after they left, cutting off their road. In order to find out something more about the weather conditions in the area we are going to, we visited the meteorological station. There we met the meteorologist Mio Miuskovic, director of the station. Šamnik, koji je osjećan veliki period vremena, od dostalih centara u njegovoj neposrednoj okolini, u pravcu... He warns us of the difficulties awaiting us on our trip, but he decides to go along with us anyway and looks over his meteorological charts. Thus, our team has acquired yet another member. Then a visit to Director of Postal Services, from whom we learned something more about what to expect on our trip to Shavnik. Our team, Dusan Vujacic, a more than enthusiastic hunter, and at one time Yugoslavia's representative in the javelin throw. Miroslav Ilicković, bird and wildlife mounter, employed by the Institute for the Protection of Wildlife. Then our rightsman, Bogdan Elujic and Mio Miuskovic, and your reporter. The sixth member of our team, Milan Pešić, is momentarily out of view. He's handling the camera. For full six months, Krnovo is inaccessible, and all transportation along the route is interrupted. In order to get the mail to Šavnik, we sent out a postal agent every second day, and for this job they get 100,000 dinners a month. And so the post office director became, in a way, the seventh member of our team. His voice accompanied us the length of our trip over the telephone wires, constantly following our progress. Six kilometers from Nikšić, just before entering the village of Lukovo, we met several people from the vicinity of the village going into town. It was market day. Here are Ilya Djurjevac and his daughter. We asked, how are things further up? Up there on Kurnovo, there my boy, every winter devil's banquet breaks loose. On 
these gentle slopes, the Ivansky faced a postal carrier caught up with us and passed on ahead. He warned us to hurry because, according to him, the weather would not hold. That was Milorad Strikovic, the post office director told us about him. <laughs> Nama se često puta dešava da nam prenosnici pošte koji vrše prenos pošte na ime na toj relaciji po dva dana ostanu u putu preko Krmova. Prošle godine... I spasio svoje život. U sutra dan je nastavio, vratio se za poštu i nastavio put za šalim. Ever for the post office in Mikšić looks for strong resistant people and trustworthy to carry the mails and money. This is the second winter for Strikovic. After 15 kilometers at a fast pace, he has allowed himself his first rest. From these stones we sighted the Kurnova Plateau. The white expanse disturbed only by dunes of unevenly drifted snow. It is said that once the snow here reached a full 10 meters depth. The wind can hit a velocity of 140 kilometers per hour and in less than a second carry off a grown man and bury him in the snow. At the moment a stillness prevailed on Kermodo. The temperature about minus 14 centigrade. We should have listened to the postal agent when he warned us to hurry. The weather did change. Just after passing Sinyayevino, clouds and a driving wind appeared out of nowhere, and suddenly we found ourselves in the grips of a blizzard. And then, when we least expected it, we met mountaineers from Nikšić, men who, whenever they have time, with their rescue equipment, travel over Kurnovo seeking out travelers in distress. Kashin Zizic, an architect from Nikšić, leads the group. And Steva Vujicic, a mechanic, to whom we are especially indebted, as later he helped us fix a failure in the camera. Radko Lučić and Mihailo Sušić. And Boža Kontić. They are all members of the Avorak Mountaineering Society, which three years ago organized an ascent of Mount Blanc. In many places we heard high praise of the courage of these men in their rescue work. Several other travelers catch up with us here and together we turn off the Nikšić road to a house in a nearby field. Practically every year a few people who start off across the plateau are not found until the spring when the snow melts. We separate. The travelers head west, the mountaineers go on towards Grozd. The clouds have dropped right down on the plateau. At the height of the blizzard, it started to thunder. Our meteorologist told us that in these parts, this is nothing unusual. The rest of us think back to the old man from Lukovo. There, my boy, devil's banquet breaks loose. Obstacles, telephone wires, below us, the snow is five meters deep. Not far beyond is a precipitation market, five and a half meters high. Mion Yushkovich, overriding our protest, holds us up at the rainfall meter, trying to break the ice to get the reading of the water level. All at once, an icy rain started falling. Unfortunately, we didn't film it because of the danger of seriously damaging the camera. No thunder and rain lasted a full three hours, then just as suddenly as it had appeared, it disappeared, as though swept away with one whisk of a broom. The sun brings to light the tops of bare tree crowns piercing through the snow. 
There, right in the middle of Kernelow, we found ourselves at a house which had saved the lives of countless persons, perhaps as many as hundreds. Maras Djikanovic lives here with his father, mother, wife, and four children. During the summers, he is a herdsman, as then the Kernelow Plateau is rich in pasture lands. Maras isn't easily talked into playing Gusle, which in these parts hangs over virtually every hearth. But we begged him to play, and he couldn't refuse. Late in the afternoon, making their way up to Colonel Plateau, we met up with an ox cart taking an injured child from Shavnik to the hospital in Mikšić. A group of 40 made up the party in order to take turns along the way and reach the hospital as quickly as possible. The boy's mother, she carries his clothes and food. Roshidar broke his leg. When the oxen could go no further, the people harnessed themselves to the cart. The tall fellow on the left is Lubo Malovich. His daughter is lying sick at the Shavnik medical station. And there are Nadin Bielic and Ratko Kasovica. Ket Koradovic, ranking chief of the People's Militia. This is the fifth time this winter that he has struggled across Kermobo helping to carry a patient. So they transferred the injured boy to a litter. Last night, at an electors' meeting, these men all volunteered as bearers of this 40 kilometers trek across unbroken snow drifts. is again usable. They must gather forces. Kernel lies ahead. Here we leave the ox sleigh as it goes forward to meet the night. Maybe they will be able to reach the mountaineering cabin at Bukovic, but probably they will have to spend the night in a shepherd's hut along the way. That's what we ourselves did. We stopped for the night at the hut at Kushevica. There 
was a full moon. The decor around here at Grandma's Billy Girls had been let loose. That's a period in March when the weather is especially unstable. It is said that this is the season for hunting as wildlife becomes restless and the animals come out from their lairs. And sure enough, the evening vigil of the hunter and mounter in our team didn't turn out to have been in vain. That's our cameraman, Milan Pesic. For the moment, he has let somebody else handle the camera. The morning gave promise of a beautiful day to come, but we didn't let ourselves be taken in when Grandma lets loose her billy goats to graze on the slopes of Mount Voynik. Then, in the morning, not even the best meteorologists can predict what the evening will bring. And that day, bad weather did blow up, but we succeeded in escaping in time to Shamnik, which finally appears before us from the hill at Tsuklin, bowed between slopes of Durmitor, Voynik and Sinyayevina. a town on three rivers, which it is said will be flooded when the Kumaritsa hydroelectric plant is built and where therefore, in the meantime, nothing now is being built. The town whose snowbound endurance makes the news every year. But now there is virtually no snow. It took us less than an hour to pass from one season into the next. Here are trucks and buses stuck here since December when the snows began. Here they have had to spend the winter. The small electricity plant is in a way a symbol of the town's isolation. It was more economical to build it than to bring in current from the city. In front of the store, a group of townspeople have gathered round old Jovan Pichovic, who tells them how, up above on Pivska, a snow avalanche destroyed his stables and damaged his house. He and Grandma barely managed to escape with their lives. Here on the left is also the president of the commune, Nikola Shushich. The store is besieged full-time by buyers from the nearby villages who expect all the flour and sugar to be sold out soon. And everybody wants kerosene, too. Our fall, the store lays in 80 million dinners worth of goods essential for life. This is a huge burden for any small enterprise. Furthermore, there isn't even a real warehouse as the food would spoil. What is here is all the stock that remains. Within 10 days, all the flour, lard and sugar will be gone. house of Shavnik's Durmitor factory, which manufactures mattresses, is full of finished articles, but the supply rooms are entirely empty. The factory has had to lay off about 30 workers. The other three forts left didn't even look up when we walked in. With everything we have seen, the results only of Shavnik's isolation during the winter months. We discuss this with the president of the Commune Assembly, Nikola Shushic. Lista aktuelnih problema naše opštine od kojih zavisi sudbina i perspektiva oko 8000 stanovnika je prilično velika. Osnovni problem the list of urgent problems which limit the fate and prospects of the 8,500 persons living in our economy is extremely long. The fundamental problem is isolation in the winter, and until this problem is resolved, we cannot even begin talking about the development of our economy. We don't have even one modern flat. We lack an adequate building for our elementary school. About 400 children are being exposed to the danger of a building which could very well collapse. The building is damp, and so on. The school, despite its poor physical condition, finishes each year with a good record, considering that some children have to walk up to 34 kilometers a day. However, in every other sphere of life, this Montenegro's most economically underdeveloped community offers very little else to write home about. Here is what Damian Shechkovic, secretary of the communal committee of the League of Communists, has to say. 
Tačno je da i do nas ima grešaka. It can be denied that we have made our mistakes too. Occasionally, we have uh, known that we were getting carried away by ideas and constructions which absolutely cannot be economically justified in this area. But there are also objective reasons which have helped bring us to this impasse. Some pseudo-theories used to be wrong, claiming that this area did not sustain life and that the only alternative was resettlement of the local population. And this kind of misunderstanding has also played its part in creating the situation we find ourselves in. And now again, let's hear what the president of the communal assembly, Nikola Shushit, said why nothing is being built here. Osnovni razlog što je Šavnik ostao ovakav kakav je do krajne razvijenje, duga diskusija oko... One of the basic reasons Shavnik has failed to develop is indeed the long discussion on the building of the Kumanica hydroelectric plant and the formation of a water accumulation lake, which would flood Shavnik. And so while they are all discussing how to go about utilizing its waters, Shavnik has had to subsist under the most difficult conditions. I think it is about time this problem was settled. And medical services are a big problem. Dr. Tomislav Tomic, just 25, was the only one willing to work under these conditions. He came to us directly from medical school. The problem of medical care in our area is just that much more complicated but the fact that during the winter months the interruption of communication makes it impossible to transport patients to mixes by car. The only alternative is the ox cart or for people to carry the patients across criminal and that is hard both on the carriers and on the patients. Three patients are now being kept at a medical station waiting to be transferred to more to Nikšić. 150 persons will start out tomorrow to traverse Kurnovo. Radoj Kabilić has a serious hemorrhage. 16-year-old Vera Malović is suffering from acute appendicitis. While we talk with the doctor, the nurse's aide comes in to say that Radomir Zarobica, who has a hydrated cyst, is feeling much worse. His temperature is up to 40 degrees. For Dr. Tomić, this will be his first solo operation, his only instrument, a scalpel. Night fell. The light from the electric bulb was no stronger than what the kerosene lamp could offer. For the operation, the spots we had brought along for our filming were used. They are battery run. These shots were taken the next morning. The patient is feeling better, but it is still out of the question to carry him by stretcher. Out on Kurnovo, where the line man Tihomir has come, it is quiet and sunny, but who knows what can happen in just a few hours. The doctor and the president of the commune have thought of a helicopter, but the question is how to come by a helicopter. It will be necessary to put through a lot of phone calls. That's why Tihomir has come out to free the wires of snow. This is part of his regular duties in the winter, regardless of the weather. A dozen or so townspeople worked together, drawing up the call for help. We sent it out to a radio television in Belgrade. The call was sent four times. At nine o'clock, an answer came through from the Yugoslav Military Air Force. The helicopter will take off from Mostar to land in Shavnik, weather permitting. Here now, on the cliffs above Shavnik, where the snow has virtually disappeared, are Tihomir and Mio Mjuskovic. Thus, to remind you, that's our companion, the director of the meteorological station in Nikšić. Mostar informed us that the helicopter couldn't take off until they receive a report on weather conditions in the Shavnik region from the meteorological station in Nikšić. Tihomir has hooked up a connection with the station at Nikšić and there they are in communication with the Mostar airport. Miuskovic has sent a report. Shortly after, the airport announced that the helicopter had taken off. Before noon, in the vicinity of Shavnik, visibility was poor, but later it opened up somewhere.
around 1 p.m. from the direction of Mount Wenig, which had been looking very threatening, the veering of the motor reached us. The helicopter appeared over the Turia cliffs, which rise above Shabnik. It circled a few times. The last report, Miuskovic had sent red. Temperature, minus 10 degrees centigrade. Wind, northeasterly. Wind velocity, 15 meters per second. Visibility, approximately 10 kilometers. The landing area would be marked by red flags. Yushkovic and Tikhomir stayed out at the telephone post, whereas our cameraman Pesic hurried back to the medical station, arriving just in time to catch the helicopter landing on the marked out area. It would seem that all of Shavnik has turned out, and that means close to 1,000 people, even the children have been let out of school. Patients are quickly transferred to the helicopter that hide a certain fear and doubtfulness behind their smiles. Amongst them is Lyubo Malovic's daughter, remember? We saw him yesterday pulling the sleigh up to Kurnovo. In less than an hour, the patients reach the Nikšić hospital. That evening, the people of Šarnik held a dance. Those 150 who would have had to start out the next day by foot with the patients have reason enough to feel gay. One part of the way to the village of Posorechi, Ratko Kasolica and Ilya Kotlica accompanied us. There they branched off to go down the canyon to where roofs had been reported the day before. At Posorechi we came on the track left by a snow slide. Later we learned that the avalanche had swept before only two stables. This is the skeleton of an ox carried 300 meters by the snow slide. Foxes and dogs have picked it clean. We joined the peasants returning from Shavnik with sacks of flour and flasks of uh, kerosene. Our trip from here should be as follows, to get over Mount Treskavac and then over a ridge of Mount Vojnik, circle back to Nikšić. To here, to the Nevidio Canyon, the road was built several years ago. Beyond, there is no road. The canyon, cut by the Komarnica, is two and a half kilometers long. 300 meters remain I'll explored. That is beyond the point reached last summer by the mountaineers from Nikšić. Those we met during the blizzard on Kurnovo. These parts could offer great prospects to Shavnik for the development of tourism if they could come by the necessary funds. Here we start climbing again. On our left is the Komarnica Canyon and on the other side of the canyon Mount Voynik. Its highest peak reaches 2,000 meters. From here the yowling of praying wolves echoes down to the valleys as they spoke wildlife, sometimes coming right up to the villages themselves. Here, the less traces of any road, the yellow cut through snowless as it faces the sun. Down below, at the bottom, runs the Komarnica, but the rocks hide it from view. But from here, 
where the Komanitsa can be clearly seen from these snow-covered rocks near the village of Duji. On Mount Treskavat sleep, two to three thousand people in the few villages scattered over this barely accessible mountain, a special kind of people, proud, hospitable and poor. Their only possessions are their sheep. At one time, it is said, they plastered their homes with a mixture made from milk whey. But no traveler who stops at one of these houses will be eating his supper from his own bag. Nobody could get away from the old warrior Miladin Malovich early. His motto, the third one brings luck. In Shavnik, when somebody falls seriously ill, they carry him to Nikšić. But here, he either dies or gets well on his own, because to Nikšić it is over 100 impassable kilometers. Here is what the doctor told us about it. In our community, there is only one doctor serving 8,500 people, and it is impossible for him to reach everybody needing attention. During the winter, the doctor often has to go hundreds of kilometers by foot through wind, rain, and snow. To serve this area, we should have at least two to three more doctors, but our economy is too poor to support that many doctors. A poor commune means that the people are poor too, and this is perhaps why they only produce what is necessary for the subsistence of their families. The secretary of the committee discussed this with us back in Shavnik. The only economic branch which offers any prospects in our area is agriculture. But with a certain understanding and investment, a lot could be done here. Then our agricultural cooperative could gather to it our individual producers, our peasants, and return them from subsistence production to market production. Just a short pull, and we are on Treskabats. Amazing, an unbelievable view, craters on craters. No traces of human life, only the imprints left by wild animals. Hundreds of prints could be counted in an hour. can go no further. Here we take our leave of Miloš Karadžić. He is from the same village, Petnica, as the ancestors of the reformer of our written language book, Karadžić. He turned back immediately to make his way while the snow is still hard. Traveling on Treskovac is possible only at night or in the early morning, up to nine at the latest. Later, the ice snow covers softens and it is possible to sink into the snow drifts up to the waist. A load of course would break his leg if his scoop were to break through the ice hardened crust. Milos Karadzic left in a hurry and he hurried on to reach a village, any village, or even a hut. Sides, a hunter's trophies. About the source of the Piva, we turn south. 75 kilometers left to Nikšić. By the time we reached the Bajovo Polje, it was night. Just before reaching Toplo Prisoje, we hear the noise of machines. 
and the sea lights. The humming and chugging comes from snow removal machines. Powerful spotlights glare. The smell of diesel and gasoline exhaust hits us. The column is moving towards the village of Brezna. Bulldozers leave behind them snow drifts, at some points as much as four meters high. Through the snow, dirty now with soot, oil and mud, moves a line of trucks carrying mail, newspaper and food. Ends our trip, which circled Mount Wainik over a distance of 300 kilometers. Mm -hmm.